Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through legal problem 1544, make the string great. It's labeled as in an easy problem. It is really pretty easy, but I thought it's good to revisit the stack data structure or the, the feature of the stack, which is first in last out. Uh, let's take a look at the problem first. It says, given a string S of lower and uppercase English letters, given a, a good string is a string which which doesn't have two adjacent characters, si and si plus one, where i is in, is within this range, including the first one, and but not, not including the last one, because it needs to compare with, with its next neighbor. So si is a lowercase letter, and si plus one is the same letter, but in uppercase, or vice versa, meaning si could be, si could be uppercase, but si plus one could be lowercase. To make the string good, you can choose two adjacent characters, that make the stream bad and remove them. You can keep doing this until the stream becomes good. Return the stream after making it good. The answer is guaranteed to be unique under the given constraints. Notice that an empty string is also good. For example, given this string, L-E-E-E-T-C-O-D-E. -E -E -E. So there is an uppercase E and lowercase E. And also you can say there's an lowercase E first or an uppercase E. So you can remove either this pair or this pair. Then the resulting the end, the string resulting from this removal is a good string or a great string, which is lead code like this. Or well, this one, uh, this second example is more interesting. As you can see, it's collapsing. So B and B, lowercase and uppercase. So these two are removed. And then the lowercase A and uppercase A, they are connected, they are adjacent after removing the two Bs. So A and A could, could be removed, and then lowercase c and uppercase c, they are removed also in the end. So the output is an empty string. That is good too. The third example is just S. There is one single character. There is nothing to be bad in the first place, so there is nothing to be removed. So we'll just return S as the output. Um, constraints here, um, which makes this uh, problem even simpler. So. Looking at this problem, especially the second example, this gives us hints that just need to use the data structure stack, which gives us the first in last out feature. For example, we can push A on top of the stack until we encounter the uppercase A, and then we can remove the lowercase A, right? In between, we'll push whatever that is in between on top of that stack, but as soon as all of those things, all of the other characters that are able to be removed, and then we'll remove them and the lowercase a and uppercase a, they will meet. They will be adjacent and then we need to remove them. We can remove them, right? So the algorithm, the idea to solve this problem is that we can simply use a stack. We push and we use a for loop to go through the given string, one character after another. Whenever we encounter a character that has never been encountered before or right now, we push them on top of the stack. And before we push them on top of the stack, we check whether there is such an element on the face of the stack, meaning on top of the stack. If the two match, one character is uppercase, the other character is the lowercase, but the value is the same, they're both A or B or C. Then we don't push the current character on top of the stack. Instead, we pop the one on top of the stack off of the stack, right? And then we'll keep doing this. After we iterate through this string, we have, if there's anything left over on top of the stack still, we just we can just uh, pop them off, form a string and reverse it before we, before we return. That's going to be the answer. Time complexity is O n, n is the number of characters in this given string. And space complexity is O n as well, because in the worst case, there's no bad, there's no bad string. There is no such two characters that are adjacent, so there is nothing to be removed. So we'll keep adding all of the characters on top of the stack. That's it. Of course, there are multiple other ways to do this. I feel this is the way that I would tackle this problem. That might, might not be the most ideal. I'm sure people might come up with other interesting uh, ways to solve this problem. Please comment down below. Let me know how you approach this problem. I'll be, in, I'll be excited to see. Uh, but now let's follow this idea and put the actual algorithm into code. All right, first um, I'm going to write a stack character stack stack type is going to be character that's good enough and which should be the most appropriate in this case and then we'll have a for loop 
to go through this uh, given string to make it more explicit and easier to understand I'll just use another variable called C char at I will go through one character after another so here so there are two cases in um, in here so first one is if the stack is empty right if that is the case we can just simply push the current character on top of the stack because there there's nothing so this one doesn't have any adjacent any adjacent character prior to this one so there's nothing to be compared with is empty if that is the case we can just add add this one on top of the stack otherwise there are a few different cases that we need to think of so first the one that we're interested in is if the current one on top of the stack is having the same value regardless of cases to the one that we are iterating on if that is the case we don't need to add we don't need to push the current one on top of the stack and we have to pop the one on top of the stack off of the stack that's what we need to do okay let me just open this wider so first how do we compare so there are multiple ways to compare the value one way is that you can compare the asking the asking value of these characters so the uppercase a is 65 lowercase a is 97 so the difference between these two is always 32 the same goes for uppercase b and lowercase b uppercase c and lowercase c because they are consecutive right so the difference between these two uh between an uppercase character and a lowercase character is always 32. That's one way you can do it. Or the other way is that we can convert everything into lower or uppercase and then do the comparison. Either way, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the later. You can do whatever way that you can think of to do the comparison, regardless of cases. That's what we want to do. Um, character two. I'm just going to convert everything into lowercase and then do the comparison. Uh, stack peak equals, yes, that sounds about right. Okay, Char character to uppercase. And then the one that we're currently iterating on. If that is the case, that means these two are equal regardless of cases. And then we can have another check. I'm just writing in different if if branches you can you can combine them into one that's totally fine i'm just making sure that they are easier to follow and understand um, the second so the uh, these two characters are equal regardless of cases then we want to make sure that they are really one is uppercase the other is lowercase so what we can do is that character is lowercase stack peak and let me copy this one here uh, and this one is C and make sure that this one is uppercase if this is the case that is good so we need to pop the one on top of the stack off the other case is on the other side so on top of the stack the element the, st the character on top of the stack is uppercase let me just copy that and paste copy this one away and so basically the reverse the uh the one that we're iterating on is lowercase and the one on top of the stack is uppercase this is this is the case that they are bad neighbors as well so we need to pop the one on top of the stack off as well in other cases that means either that means both the one on top of the stack also the one that we're iterating on they are the same case either uppercase or lowercase right in that case we need to add this one on top of the stack they are not really bad neighbors so we need to add the one that we are iterating on on top of the stack which is good for example just like lead code these two ee right so both of them they are not considered they are not considered as bad neighbors so if that if they, that is not the case which means they are not bad neighbor, neighbors either so we'll just add this one on top of the stack as well so after this is the complete logic of going through this string using a stack 
at the end, what we can do is that if we'll check if there's anything, if there's any characters left over on top of the stack, if there's any, we can just pop all of them off and reverse it, then return. All right. We'll just use a stream builder. Builder. Yes. Stream builder. New stream builder. While stack is empty. We can just keep popping things off of the stack. Stack pop sb append and then we'll set in the end we'll just return sb reversed. This is one thing that uh, when we add things on top of the stack, the later character is added on top of the stack. So the first character is always at the bottom of the stack. So that's why we need to reverse it before we return and then do string. All right, uh, this is what we have. All right, now we can see in the full code. Uh, now let me just hit run code and see if it's accepted. Wrong answer. Something is wrong. Hmm. Something is wrong. All right. Let me double check. All right. This is the problem. So I need to convert both of them into lowercase. Let me give it a try again. Somehow my mind doesn't listen to my, uh, my typing doesn't listen to my mind. Okay. Now it looks good. Let me hit submit. All right. It's accepted. This is one way again. This is one way to solve this problem. I hope it makes sense and I hope I explain everything clearly. This is labeled again. This is labeled as an easy problem, just as a good uh, refresher for the stack data structure. Um, if you like this video, this video helps you make sense of the stack data structure or help you understand this problem. Just do me a favor and smash the like button. That's going to help a lot. Tap the gently tap the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and help me out tremendously. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I have accumulated quite a few lead code tutorials and videos and also different sorts of data structures and algorithm and also Amazon Web Services tutorials. So hopefully I'll just see you guys in just a few short seconds. Thank you very much for watching.